Hi, Vertforce. It's Kimber Hill, and today we are chatting over a warm cup of coffee with our employment partners at Intuit, who care so much about career progression for you, for military spouses, that they've built three different training programs to help you gain and achieve the skills that you need to qualify for their remote roles. Virtual employment is here to stay. I'm military spouse, Vertforce founder, and your remote work expert, Kimber Hill. Subscribe now to learn how you too can thrive in the virtual workforce. So one of our favorite remote employers, and I would say arguably the most focused on military spouse issues and creating pathways for you to achieve career continuity and career progression is Intuit. They are the proud makers of TurboTax, QuickBooks Live, and Mint. They also recently acquired Credit Karma and MailChimp, so maybe we'll see some action with those in the future. Hello, they are Fortune's top 100 best places to work. They are on this list. That means they have an amazing remote work culture. Positions that they hire for through Vertforce include the QuickBooks Live Bookkeeper, the Pro Advisor, the TurboTax Live Associate, and the Credentialed Tax Expert. And you may be thinking, I'm not a bookkeeper. I am not a tax expert. How can I find my way with this company? We are going to talk all about the career pathways with you today over coffee. Our partnership with Intuit started in 2019 and they really grasped onto the awareness of military spouse issues like the resume gap, lack of experience, experience, your career pivot after career pivot after career pivot that you go through each time you have to PCS. And they did something about it. So since 2019, we've been seeing them release course after course after course um, to help you, to help you build career continuity and progression in this mobile lifestyle that we live. So first they, well, I want to touch on the Coursera 80 hour course series. This one was huge. You know, we did, we released this one on behalf of Intuit a few months ago and it broke the internet because the four courses that you can complete in 80 hours qualify you to apply as a bookkeeper at Intuit. And this is really relevant today because they're actively hiring for that role. So we are happy to talk more about that one today, but they've also created a path for tax associates hired at Intuit to become enrolled agents. That one is equally important because it is a federal credential that will move with you all over the United States. And today we're also gonna chat about their new path that they've created for you to move from no experience in tax to becoming a tax associate. So this has most recently been released with Intuit Academy. Joining us today for our live coffee are the creators of Intuit Academy. I believe that we have Artie Martinez. She's a senior program manager on the expert development team. Hey, Artie, if you want to give us a wave and say hello. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Good to see you. Uh, and then Intuit team, did we have Liz join us? I'm here. Hi, Yay, Kimber. she made it. Hey, Liz. <laughs> Liz is Intuit's head of expert development who has a passion for helping Intuit employees succeed. We're happy that she made it. We've also got Blair Dribben, our favorite QuickBooks recruiter. He is a military brat. Hey, Br hey Blair. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Very good. And then we've got Karina Deckard. She's our favorite TurboTax recruiter and she's been successful in very high volume recruiting with Intuit. Um, since 2014, she also does a lot of bilingual recruiting. Uh, and that brings us to Army spouse, Samantha Bryan, who became a bilingual QuickBooks Live front office expert after completing Intuit's 80 hour course series, the bookkeeping certification course that we so lovingly refer to. And she also became pro advisor certified. Go Samantha. Um, she also holds a, holds a master's degree in accounting and financial management. We're very excited to talk to her today. So like many of um, the people that introduced themselves, I was a stay at home mom for 10 years. Uh, I got my education out of the way and I found myself not knowing what to do with my education. And I found this opportunity through Vertforce. Um, and I completed the 80 hour bookkeeping course. 
then I completed the pro advisor. I applied through into it and just like many of you that have applied didn't hear back for a couple weeks. So I reached out to Blair. Blair put me in contact with a recruiter. Um, I got my interview through um, HireView, completed my interview, and then two months later I started working. Awesome. Thank you. Can you tell us what Hire View is and how did you prepare for the Hire View interview? So the Hire View interview is a one-way video interview. So you answer a series of questions. You have three minutes to answer each question. And the way I prepared, I just um, just went over basic accounting terms in English and Spanish because I was hired as a bilingual expert. And that's how I prepared. And we're all super proud of your accomplishment and what you've gone through to get to where you are because it's it's in a it's a shining example of how Intuit listened to what the military spouse community is going through. And then Vert Force, we did our part to get the word out for you to find out about it. And then you took action and it's just unlocked so many different things for you. So I know that Intuit does have a need for bilingual bookkeepers, but how is the bilingual hiring process different than um, any other hiring process? So the only difference is that aside from your regular hire view interview, they add a third section that will ask you questions um, in Spanish. So you have to answer some particular accounting terms in Spanish. So they're looking for fluency on the language and two, that you know the terms, the accounting terms in particular. Thank you. And when you submit the video component for the Hire View interview, was there time before you heard back? Was there, you mentioned it earlier, but it's just kind of, I'm going to submit this and then sit and, and wait and tap my fingers and tap my foot. Uh, it was about six I think six weeks, but I reached out to Blair every two weeks. I okay. Thought I'm pretty persistent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is, I, that's a good thing. I have a, a podcast episode called The Art of the Follow Up. Um, Michelle can drop it in the, the chat if you have a moment, Michelle. But Which following I actually up. actually watched. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did it. Okay. Awesome. I'm glad. Did it help you? It did. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Um, so, when you're not hearing back, what do you think? And I should probably ask Karina this or ask the recruiters this. When a candidate is not hearing back, what does that mean to the candidate? What should they be doing? Definitely follow up with the recruiter because it could be what if there's just a delay in getting results? Um, that's usually the, the case depending on when it, during the season. But for the most part, you definitely want to reach out directly to your recruiter and no harm in asking, hey, it's been a week or so, just um, you know, asking for a follow-up or any feedback. So please, I encourage that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add in on that too real quick here, Kimber. And thanks for Karina for covering that. Um, for the higher view evaluation, depending on how much volume we have coming in, um, it could be two weeks or more. So the follow-up by Samantha is key. So I definitely recommend it. You're never gonna bother your recruiter by following up, right? We're working with tons of applicants and candidates on a regular basis. And we're doing our best to drive the process forward on, on our end with our uh, internal hiring manager teams who are doing the evaluations. Sometimes they just get a little backed up because we have a lot of interest and a lot of folks going through the hire view process. Yes, and hiring at Intuit is sometimes seasonal and cyclical, right? Um, or is it you're hiring all year round? Can you touch on that? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll touch on it and then I'll, let Karina, I'll hand it over to Karina as well to share some more because on the QuickBooks Live side, these um, the, the QuickBooks Live bookkeeper opportunities are year round. So we typically are hiring year round. Um, I, I will say we're, we're usually a little bit busier um, right before the, the tax season because um, a lot of businesses are getting ready to prepare their taxes. And so there's a bigger need for uh, ramping up to support that from a bookkeeping perspective. Um, you know, that doesn't mean we're hiring every month, but we are typically hiring throughout the entire calendar year. 
on the turbo tax side we do hire for the tax season however just because the tax season either has ended we still have candidates that we're putting through for interviews so then that way if you pass your interview your recruiter will follow up with you and then that way once we're, we're ready to initiate recruitment for the next tax season you'll get that official verbal offer from the recruiter thank you karina and blair i want to take just a moment to answer two questions in the chat so uh one is for samantha Samantha, Ryan Lopez would like to know, um, how did you learn the specific accounting terms for Spanish? Was there uh, a course that you did or training material that you needed? I actually took some accounting classes um, in Mexico many years ago. So I kind of just brushed up on them on Google, but I already had the prior knowledge. Ryan, I would also wonder too, if Act Now Education could put you through a Spanish language accounting course, like something basic. Um, where if you know these terms in English and you just took a, a refresher course in Spanish, maybe that would help. And our contact there is Jay. If you'd like for us to put you in touch with him, you can email hire at brutforce.us. All right, and then one other question before we dive into anything else. Let me find it. How do you get started with a recruiter from Kim Trenka? So Kim, I think first you need to decide which role you qualify for and which role you would like to apply for. Once you apply, you start your application process and a recruiter should contact you. And I'll let Career, Karina or Blair, you guys, your name together is Career. Um, <laughs> correct me if I said anything wrong there. Yeah, I can, I can um, add it, jump in there too. Um, if, if you apply and you're, you know, you feel like it's been longer than it should have been in terms of hearing back. Um, I, I always recommend this to you, Kimber. You can, um, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn um, uh, or connect to me through um, the Vertforce partners. So I'm happy to help out there. Thank you, Blair. All right, my our next topic that we wanna cover before we move to open Q&A with the whole group is talking about the new Intuit Academy. And we're very fortunate to have Artie and Liz with us today. I'm very excited to talk to Artie and Liz more on this new education resource that is completely free. Liz, could you give us a quick overview of what is Intuit Academy? Absolutely. Thanks so much, Kimber. And um, I put this in the chat, but I did want to say it was so great hearing all the introductions and seeing them all in the chat. Um, it's really inspiring. Uh, everything that you know the, that you all as a community um, do and go go through like I, I'm just really inspired and glad that we have these programs available and we want to help you and 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 bring you along in your careers with us and into it super excited so thank you for sharing um, I'm a mom too my kids are 12 and 14 and I know <laughs> from personal experience um, how important flexibility and, and you know when you're juggling so many things as a working mom there's just so much to balance and my husband is not in the military and i and so i only imagine that for for many of you it's like only amplified that that need and so um but I, I can relate to a certain degree. I think I think many of us can. So thank you for sharing. Uh, but to answer your question, Kimber, uh, Intuit Academy is our new online learning platform where we are offering educational programs that prepare people for roles in the Intuit Expert Network. And so we have currently our TurboTax Live service offering and our QuickBooks Live service offering. Um, that's what we have today. Um, we have, you know, visions and dreams of expanding our services. And as we do so, uh, Intuit Academy will continue to provide new educational programs for any domain in which we have live services. Uh, so right now um, we launched just about two months ago. So it's a brand new offering. Um, and we launched with one program, our tax level one program, which I'm sure Artie will tell you more about. Uh, we will have tax level two launching uh, in the late spring, early summer. Um, and we will also be offering our bookkeeping program um, probably within the next, I would say six to 12 months on Intuit Academy. In the meanwhile, please continue going to Coursera. Uh, please continue going to Pearson View to take the certification exam for bookkeeping. Uh, we do hope to bring that onto the Intuit Academy platform, but um, it is 
right now we have since launch we have about i think arnie will keep me honest over 3,000 people enrolled at intuit academy um, our tax level one program has 17 courses approximately 25 to 30 hours of learning content and then a uh, virtual on-demand exam that covers all of the content uh, which you can take um, any anywhere anytime from your computer um, and if you pass the exam when you pass the exam um, you will earn a badge that you can it goes through credly which means you can share it on your linkedin profile um, you it will certainly be visible okay. to uh, any intuit recruiter that you uh, that you speak with or reach out to and helps you become uh, a qualified candidate uh, in TurboTax live that's really exciting thank you so much liz we have several questions pouring in for Liz. Great. And uh, do you want to take a second to answer these now or should we should we get the Intuit team in the chat? Um, let's see Whatever here. Whatever is easiest for let's, you Let's all. do two. Let's do two okay. really quick. Uh, Jean asks, my recent degree doesn't have anything to do with accounting. So what's the chance of me being, and I'll, I'll paraphrase here, being successful with one of these programs or taking advantage with, of one of these programs? Oh, thank you for that question. So no prior tax knowledge is needed to take the courses. We are starting from, from the beginning with um, federal individual income tax in level one. So we, you are not required to know anything about tax in order to get started we will start you from the beginning and teach you what you need to know uh, right now we are covering federal income tax uh, so it does not include state income tax at this time uh, and the level one program sort of covers your um, like most common tax situations so what you would need to know to um, complete tax returns for most people. So W-2 income, how to read uh, tax documents, um, and then how to complete like the most common tax forms. And then when level two launches, we'll start to get into some of the more complicated. And then uh, we do have plans to continue on. Tax is a very, very broad <laughs> subject. Right. Um, and so we do, have plans to continue building courses as we get into more and more complex tax topics but the level one is sort of your foundational knowledge here are the most common tax documents you need to read common tax forms how to fill them out um, and that's what the exam covers as well thank you liz and hannah would like to know if she's already a certified tax professional through a different organization would she be able to bring that with her to into it so if she's already credentialed, as in she is an enrolled agent, CPA, or a JD, like a tax attorney, then she would already be qualified for a role as a tax expert. And um, Karina can probably speak more to that. If she's certified by a different organization, actually, I'm not sure how that's viewed from the recruiting standpoint. Uh, maybe Karina can answer that better. I, I can answer. So certified for us regardless. Um, I mean, we can always look to see what you currently have, but um, certain certifications that count for the tax expert would be like the CPA, enrolled agent or practicing attorney. If you don't have that, um, we don't require any other certifications, but being part of the Intuit Academy, that's a plus. So we can always visit that and you can always connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd be more than happy to uh, connect with you. Thank you so much. And, and we'll hold the other questions. We're almost finished with uh, introducing the new tax level one program, but I had a couple of other things I would love Artie to mention before we dive into questions. I believe that what Artie is going to share with us will help answer a lot. Uh, so Artie, can you tell us a little bit about why the, in, the tax level one course has been created? Absolutely. Um, and also, again, thank you so much for having me. And I wanted to echo what Liz said, listening to all of your stories just made it, it just is more affirmation as to why we do what we do, which kind of segues into this question. Um, there's basically Intuit Academy was created to 
offer an opportunity for those that are interested in coming to work for Intuit, either in TurboTax Live or QuickBooks Live, but may not have the experience or the means or the ability to get to courses or be able to take classes or enroll, or they're not even quite sure how to get started. So um, what we did is actually partner with our talent marketing team, and they sent emails to about 25,000 underqualified people that have showed interest in Intuit um, and TurboTax Live roles, but just, you know, were slightly underqualified. So they sent them this email and introduced Intuit Academy because Intuit Academy is out there. It's free. Anyone can join it. Anyone can take the classes. Um, and since it's self-paced, you don't really have to enroll at any specific time. And again, like Liz mentioned, the tests are online and not proctored. So again, everything is very much based on your own schedule. So the launch of Intuit Academy is really allowing individuals that may not have the three years necessary and tax experience that typically we're looking for for a tax associate role. But if someone say, has one year of experience doing taxes, paid uh, experience doing taxes, they can come in and take the classes, take the test and earn the badge. And when they earn the badge, that actually will send a trigger to our recruiting team and someone from recruiting will actually reach out to them. So this has really been kind of a labor of love to be able to look at how we can create programs that will help people that are really interested in getting into various careers, give them an opportunity regardless of you know where they are or what their past experience was. Thank you. That's so informative. So after they complete the exam, what other qualifications do they need to bring to the table to become a tax associate at Intuit? Great question. So um, if someone has not come from Intuit Academy, they're typically looking for a minimum of three years paid experience. If someone has completed the Intuit Academy program and earned their badge, then they're able to waive the three years and we're only looking for one year of paid tax experience. So that's a big jump, which is pretty awesome. That is a huge jump. So what is that exam like? Good question. So the exam is actually a very unique format because this is unproctored. So it's very different than what you would see on the Pearson site. Um, so this is unproctored and it can be taken anywhere. So because of that, it is this very unique format called a discrete option multiple choice, which basically means you're presented with a question in a scenario and an answer and you either say yes or no. And if you say, well, whatever your answer is, you hit that button and you do not go back and you can't go back. So, and it's also timed. So what we do on the Academy side in terms of support is we've created some videos as well as post webinars to help people before they take the test kind of better prep. It's also open books. So any notes people take during their, um, during the courses or any tax resources they have, or if they want to Google things while they're on, um, they can do that, but it is timed, but they do have the ability of using notes. Um, the other thing about Intuit Academy is that, you know, there are there are folks back in the background of Intuit Academy that are here to help. So like I mentioned before, we can do we do host webinars where we want to be able to prep people, you know, to kind of get them ready, give them that confidence to sit down and take the test. And also there are two options there are two opportunities to take the test. So if someone takes the exam and they may not be as successful the first time, they'll have the opportunity to look at a score report, which will actually break down where they did well in and what areas they might want to focus in. Then they can take that score report, go back to all of the courses and kind of focus on those areas before attempting again. So hopefully on that second attempt, they are successful. If for some reason they are not, they go into what's called a six month cool off period in which they can again, continue to study, um, on those little, on those specific areas that they may need a little bit more improvement upon and then go back and take the test again. Marty and Liz, it's clear that you have put the time, thought and attention into developing this educational pathway to the tax associate and into your academy. Into academy is gonna be a masterpiece very, uh, very, very soon. Now I wanted to ask you to help, help me describe this to our military spouses and veterans today because uh, this is the thing that lights me on fire in a good way, right? We're talking about career progression and career continuity. Why do I encourage everyone here to go take the tax level one course and consider TurboTax as the career track for you? It's because they've not only given you the tax level one course, but once you become 
a tax associate with Intuit, there is an opportunity to become an enrolled agent. And you heard me mention this at the beginning of the call. That is a federal licensure with the IRS. It moves with you from duty station to duty station, and uh, it gives you a lot of career power. Uh, Artie, can you talk to us a little bit about what that means? Absolutely. And I might lean on Karina a little bit as here as well. Um, but the enrolled agent, like you said, it is a federal credential. And so once a person is um, comes into Intuit and they are a tax associate, as long as they don't already hold a credential, which is the JD or a CPA, um, they do have the opportunity to participate in our EA credential assistance program. The program it lasts about a year. A person can enroll in it. There are study groups. There are mentors that are available to help. And we also provide access to what's called Fast Forward Academy, which is, I don't want to say it's a boot camp. Liz, correct me. I'm, I'm not I'm at a loss for the actual term, but it's kind of like a, it's a study program and a study guide That's that correct. is available for yeah. people. Um, so is that right? <laughs> Is that yes. a good description? Uh, yeah, so fast forward to Canada. So to become an enrolled agent, uh, you need to pass three separate exams that are offered by the IRS, one on individual income tax, business tax, and then on um, ethics and compliance. And so there are three exams and Fast Forward Academy uh, provides you with all the study materials that you need to study for all three exams. And so um, they have multiple, uh, they have an online version, they have a print version that you can purchase at a, at a discount. Um, so this is, a, a, the EA program is an exclusive offering for Intuit employees. So once you are with us as a tax associate, um, then you are eligible to enroll in our EA program um, and become a, an IRS enrolled agent. And the picture that I'm hoping to paint for you all is there's a ladder built in for you here, a ladder of career progression. And it starts with the Intuit level one, uh, tax level one through Intuit Academy. And then it's gonna move into tax level two. Once you're qualified and hired, you have the opportunity to additionally climb that ladder and go to the enrolled agent pathway, obviously optional, but there, and that's what's important. Yes, absolutely. And also to, once you're with us in tax, maybe you want to learn bookkeeping or once you're with us as a bookkeeping bookkeeper, maybe you want to learn tax. Um, we are really working towards building like a culture of continuous learning and growth uh, for our that. expert network. And so um, starting off with one of these uh, either tax level one or the bookkeeping program, wherever your interest is, is a great place to start. Um, and then once you're with us, we're really committed to helping you learn and grow. And Michelle Salas asks, is there a ladder on the bookkeeping side? And Michelle, this is perfect timing uh, for this part of our conversation because there are options on the bookkeeping side. And I'd love to bring Blair back into the conversation to chat with us about that 80 hour course. Uh, also the pro advisor options as well. Yeah, awesome. Be happy to share more about that. So um, I'll, I'll talk about the, the Intuit Bookkeeping Professional cert Certification. That's the 80 hour course. And really, this is great for individuals who are, um, you know, looking to learn those foundational bookkeeping and accounting skills to move into this type of career. Uh, it's also a great refresher for those individuals who are, you know, maybe have an accounting background, but have had a, um, you know, a break like many, many of the mill spouses here mentioned, you know, have been staying at home mom for a number of years. And it's just a good way to kind of um, get back into this type of work. Um, that one is um, yeah, 80 hour course through uh, Coursera. And then there's a final exam through, through Pearson view. And then you get your certificate. Um, um, like Liz said, once you pass, right? And um, it, it's just something we're super excited and really happy to be able to offer to to interested candidates. That one is not required for the, the QB Live um, positions in order to be hired, but it's definitely recommended and has a huge value add. Um, the QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor certification, that one is required for uh, the QuickBooks Live bookkeeper roles. Um, this one is free for you to complete, uh, and it is uh, around eight to 12 hours. Um, of your time that you'll dedicate to this. There's some training and modules you'll do and then some exams um, to pass through that process. 
and the reason why we have that one tied to the, as a requirement for these positions is it helps us honor our promise to our customers that they're going to be connecting with a real live expert with the QBO software so they know they're going to be getting the best service, guidance, and advice to do their bookkeeping, um, which will help them be successful uh, in their in their own business there. Um, so those are the those are the two things there. Um, Kimber, were they also asking about kind of like career progression and laddering up? Did you say as well? Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let me let me talk about that a little bit, too. Um, I, I'm excited to share with you that the majority of individuals um, we hire within QuickBooks Live um, start out at a bookkeeper position, and that's either ranging from a, an associate bookkeeper up to a senior expert bookkeeper. And um, depending on how well you do in the hire view interview, the phone screen and your credentials, the hiring teams will make the decision at what level is appropriate to hire you on at. Um, from there, you can easily progress into a, a lead bookkeeper position. Um, the lead position is always hired um, from internal QuickBooks Live bookkeepers. So if you're performing at a high level and the interest is there, there's an opportunity for you to move into that lead role where you're more of a subject matter expert to help support a team of bookkeepers. And then from there, you can move into um, what we call internally as a manager one position, but it'd be a QuickBooks Live manager position. And that's where you're managing over you know, a team of bookkeepers and leads. Um, that's where the role becomes full-time employment. So you would see the benefits package expand there as well as the compensation expand uh, accordingly um, with that type of role. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that the internal mobility within the QuickBooks Live space um, is highly attainable. Um, we always promote from within for these opportunities. Um, so if it's something that you, when you join, you're, you're really enjoying and performing uh, at a high level, the opportunity is there for you to continue to progress through the QuickBooks Live space um, while still having a flexible schedule, being able to work remote. Um, if you need to move locations within the US, no big deal. So um, it's a great opportunity from those, from those regards. So we're getting a lot of questions. Uh, the last person I want to touch base with here is Samantha one more time. Samantha, can you tell us what your experience was like um, before you took the course, but also um, your work experience before you dove into the course and pursued this with, with Intuit? Um, I had about a 10 year experience on bookkeeping, mm -hmm. but it was with one company only mm -hmm. and here at Intuit I work for I have like 30 clients okay so while my experience was relevant it's definitely not the kind of experience that I'm getting here can you describe to us what your average day looks like so I get I, I get to work I mean I, I come home to work <laughs> I check my email um, I check all my notifications from clients I answer notifications, messages, comments, chat, and then I start my bookkeeping. And depending on uh, where we are in the month, I either categorize transactions or I reconcile accounts. And I'm always doing reach out to customers so they can submit documents, um, talk to customers on video calls, because that's very important. We, that's the live part of the bookkeeper. Thank you. All right, we're going to move into open q and I know we have a ton of questions in the chat. If for the bookkeeping, um, specifically the, the positions for that, what percentage would you say of the, of the job needs to be done in like a totally quiet environment? Like I can't take it to Starbucks or the pool if the kids are at the pool or things like that. I can, I can start on that one and then maybe I'll have Samantha chime in a little bit as well. But um, ideally you have a, you know, a home office or place to work where you can be on video uninterrupted either with your clients or with um, your team members. Um, and then depending if your front office meaning more um, um, client facing versus back office, which is more heads down bookkeeping work. Well, although you still have uh, responsibility to connect virtually with your clients and your internal uh, teammates, um, it would be tough to do the work from a Starbucks or from the pool. Like you would want to do it from a home office. Um, also just to provide the best, most professional experience to our, our customers as well, right? So um, I'm not saying that you, you couldn't do the work if you had the kiddos running around in, in the background in another room. But um, the other thing too, is we, we do a internet speed diagnostic test to make sure your internet's compliant with, with the upload download speeds that we require. So um, it would be tough for you to, to, to 
you, you wouldn't be able to do it, you know, work in Wi-Fi from a coffee shop or the pool or anything like that. Uh, so I would agree with Blair. Uh, you have to be connected to like hardwire internet connection. So you would not be able to work at Starbucks or a pool. If you're front office, you definitely need a quiet space because you are um, on video chat with your client and they don't want any background noise. And if you're back office, uh, you can have children at home, but you do need a quiet space because you're working with numbers and information that are, you know, client finance. So kind of delicate. Samantha, you're front office, right? Yes. How do you like that? I like it because I get to uh, talk to the customer and um, I get to do their book and I get to help them uh, focus on their day to day. I don't like chasing them for documents, so, but it's just part of the job. You know, you don't always like everything about your job. Thank you for sharing. All right. Our next sure. question is coming from Michelle. Can I ask? Um, if you are going to ask a question, if you're asking about one pro one opportunity or the other, just let us know which one you're talking about. Not that anybody hasn't. I just wanted to help steer the help the other listeners understand what your question is about. Hi everyone. Yeah, I'm more on the bookkeeping side. Um, interested on that. I did have a few questions. Um, I do have prior banking experience, um, both in, I guess, in like an actual bank and then also behind with reconcile, um, reconciling general ledgers. So I was wondering, is that kind of work experience similar to bookkeeping and what you require in the bookkeeping field? Um, and then what are your hours to start off in this position? Um, is it part-time, full-time? Um, and the pay, if you're able to give me that information, at least the starting. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for the question, uh, question, Michelle. Um, so, the experience you mentioned is is, is transferable, right? Um, but it's a little different than the core end to end paid bookkeeping that you would be doing in this role, or if you were working at a small bookkeeping firm or you had your own your own bookkeeping practice. Um, you know, there's there's aspects of doing reconciliation, categorization, month, quarter, year end close. Um, pulling reports for, for customers and clients, um, helping them do their initial setup, set up chart of accounts, um, really kind of helping maintain monthly organization within their books um, or ranging to more complex type of actions such as cleanup um, with their books. And then you'd be doing this with multiple clients. Um, in terms of the schedule, we have a, these, the QuickBooks Live bookkeeping roles are all year round, but they are part-time. So it's a minimum of 20 hours a week. Um, you can work 25, 29, and even up to 40 hours a week. All of those hours would be worked between QuickBooks Online regular business hours, which are Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific. So um, essentially, let's say you want to work 20 hours a week, we have a number of different scheduling options for those amount of hours a week, and you could select and choose. That's why it's flexible. It's not just one set shift, right? You have options to choose, and then you would work that set schedule throughout the week on a regular basis. In the event you needed to eventually change your schedule, that's just a conversation you would have with your manager, and they, they are typically able to accommodate. Um, but it's not something where one day you sign on at 9 a.m., and the next day you sign on at noon, and the next day you sign on at 6 a.m. It's, it's a set schedule throughout the week there. Um, and then the last question on pay, um, I, I can tell you that the, the pay rates are competitive. They're based off of benchmarking against uh, similar um, virtual um, types of roles um, that are part time in the nation. And they're also dependent upon your your experience level as well as your geographic location as well. We tie it into that, too. Um, additionally, there's an eight and a half percent fiscal year and bonus tied to these positions as well, which is based off of your fiscal year earnings, which is really nice. Um, and then we do have um, a benefits package that we provide, which it would inc which includes a 401k with a really healthy match. Uh, it's a, every dollar you contribute into it will match a dollar twenty five and then eligibility for you to participate in into its employee stock purchase program. So when you compare this, this type of part time virtual opportunity to, to other ones in the marketplace, what we found is a lot of them don't offer the benefits package or a bonus. Um, so that really does help to set, uh, set these opportunities uh, apart. And then when you think about the ability to, to move up uh, within the QuickBooks Live space as well, from a career development standpoint, it's another um, you know, great thing that we're happy to happy to share. 
Thank you, Blair. Michelle, did that answer your question? Yes, okay. All right, Raina, would you like to go next? Yes, hi. My question is for a bookkeeping side as well. Um, Samantha, you had mentioned there is a front and a back end. Who decides where your position? Um, do we have any, um, any say in if we wanna work in the front or the back? Normally you get assigned to a team and it would be based on into its uh, needs. And you would find out whether your back office or front office wants your assignment. But both positions are amazing. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> that sounds very familiar to the needs of the military. And, you know, for us, it's the needs of the Navy. You, you get placed where you're needed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, having said that, I do, I do know of bookkeepers who like, if you communicate with your manager, like if you have a preference for one or the other, they, it sort of just depends um, on how much sort of what the sort of current demand is placed on your team from our customers. So our, you know, meeting our customers needs is our absolute top priority, providing them with the best service. And that requires a combination of front office and back office. But um, so I don't, I, yeah, you, you get assigned sort of based on, on business demand, but um, I think you could always communicate with your manager say hey here's where i think my strengths are or here's where you know what my preference is and if they're able to accommodate you i think i don't know samantha if you if you feel it's feel differently but um it sort of depends on your manager as well and this and the situation of your particular team at the time gotcha yeah i don't have a preference i was just wondering if there was any like actual uh, method they, they do ask you, but they do take into account like your ability. So yeah, as you're going through the training. Based, yeah, it's based on, on the experience levels of each person on the team. Also like the front office is a more customer facing, um, customer obviously customer facing role and then back office helps to support. So based on each person's sort of individual experience and background, they try to make the best fit. Thank you. Thanks, Raina. Hannah, would you like to go next? Yes. Um, so I am currently an enrolled agent. Um, I'm looking more towards going to the bookkeeping side of things, but either or kind of works for me. I'm pretty much open. With both of the positions, I travel back home a lot to Illinois and Indiana. Um, would that affect working could i take the work with me to other states or how would that work i can share on the on the turbo tax side though um i'll tell you one you wouldn't be able to work for um be in both roles it would be one or the other so you are welcome to apply an interview for both but um what happens is regardless of whatever state you're you're in you do have to pass a speed test and it's an internet speed test that we have all of our agents complete because we have specific upload and download speeds and it's for security reasons as well. Um, I know that's why we were talking about you need to be hardwired, um, no satellite, no cell phone, no hotspots are allowed. And once again, it's for security reasons because when you're talking to our customers, they will you'll be on video and they will be screen sharing their TurboTax screen. So it's a lot of confidential information that's listed on there. but whatever state you're in, you would have to make sure that you um, successfully pass the speed test. So yes, that's a possibility. And Blair, I can have you speak on the QuickBooks side. Yeah, um, I, I think that the, the preference would be you're working one state, one location. If, you know, perhaps you had to travel like a one-off and, and needed to do some work from another state, I think that's something you could likely work out with your manager as long as your internet was um, compliant with our with our guidelines. But to be able to, um, you know, work in one state for, you know, a couple months and another state, a couple months, another state, a couple months, um, I don't think that's something we'd be able to accommodate. Also, you know, I'm thinking about like the, the different tax implications tied to your pay as well come into play. And um, so we would need to keep those things in mind as well. Thank you, Karina and Blair for clarifying that the possibility is there, but the biggest concerns are internet and security. Lee, would you like to go next? 
I have a question about、uh, QuickBook Live, the taking the eighty-hour course, and then、uh, at the end you're supposed to take a test.、Uh, what if、uh, I don't pass? Uh, can I retake the test, or do I have to pay for it? Hi, Lee. Thanks so much for that question. So yes, you may retake the exam. The exam is offered. The bookkeeping exam right now is currently offered by Pearson View. There is a cost of $149 to take the exam. The prep courses on Coursera are free through Acnow Education, but the exam is $149,、uh-huh. um, and you may retake it, but you do have to、uh, pay for each test attempt. Oh, okay. Although I will tell you that、um, we have、uh, great reports that people who do complete the courses on Coursera have an extremely high passing rate on the first attempt. So if you go、okay. through the, that course and you, you know, there are. Uh, quizzes and projects within the course, and if you successfully answer those quiz questions and complete all four courses, and you know pass sort of the quizzes that are within those courses, you have a very strong chance of passing the exam on the first attempt.、Um, I would say, by and large, the people who complete all four courses、um, have a have a very high pass rate on the first try. What is the、uh, passing score? Just seventy, seventy-five, eighty, something like、oh, that. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs>、uh, I'm I don't know off the top of my head. I can tell you, it's a fifty-question exam.、Um, it's I think actually it's a fifty-question exam. It takes one hour. It's a proctor. It is proctored,、uh, even though you can take it remotely,、um, and I'm not 100 sure what the past is. Is it is there a way? And sometime you can email me, e- email to my email that doesn't get an answer for that. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not sure if we can do that, but I, I would say I'm get. I think the passing score is somewhere between 70 and 80 percent. But okay,、um, it's a if you've completed the courses. Um, there are no surprises on the test. Oh, okay, okay. Because you know, I I have a fear of this. I I took the、uh, what is called the the real estate California real estate exam, and and I, I took it three times and、I、never passed. So I have、mm-hmm. a fear of, of passing. So that's、um, why I ask. <laughs> yeah, I can re- no, I can I, relate, Lee. That's yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I can relate, Lee. That's a test anxiety is a real thing. If you like, you can email hire at vertcourse. us, and we、uh-huh. can see what additional information we can dig up on the course for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.、Mm-hmm. Judy, would you like to go next? Hi.、Um, so I wanted to ask. I had actually、um, interviewed with QuickBooks a couple of months ago, and it just wasn't a good time for me for the hiring time. Like I think they had a March, and then she told me there's a June one coming up, and we're literally moving in the middle of June. So I was like, I can't be hired in June.、Um, so I don't know if there's going to be like another date or if they have a further date for that. But for TurboTax, do they have the same kind of thing where there's like a specific hiring window that you have to be available for、um, for those classes, or for for to be hired with TurboTax? Do they have like the same kind of specific window? I'll I'll speak to the the piece on the QuickBooks and upcoming hiring real quick, and then I'll hand it over to Karina to touch on the the TurboTax.、Um, Hiring timeframes.、Um, so right now we're working on early June, mid June hire dates for QuickBooks Live, which you mentioned, which would definitely be tricky if you're moving because that's you know once you start your your two weeks of training and it's really important to go through that process.、Um, so、um, we. As of today, we do not have、uh, future hire dates confirmed on the calendar. I think there's some possibility for the August timeframe. Last I heard,、um, so、um, just keep in touch with your recruiter, or、um, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to help out too.、Um, but no, no further confirmed dates as of as of today. There will be. They're just not confirmed yet. Yeah. On the TurboTax side, we don't have、uh, confirmed start dates for next tax season. 
but folks, we're still putting uh, people through for interviews. We are providing feedback on completed, evaluated interviews, so I'm letting everyone know yes or no if they pass the interview. Okay. And then also, I have another one for TurboTax. Um, I know you guys said that uh, you need one year of the tax experience. What do you consider tax experience? So I, I'm currently a bookkeeper, so I do payroll taxes. I've done um, like 990s for nonprofits that I was doing bookkeeping for. And then I've done my own personal taxes using Tur TurboTax. Like, is there something else that I should be doing to get that year experience? So I'll tell you, I know that for um, the military, we will take any uh, volunteer tax preparation experience. So meaning of the um, the booking is not what we're looking for, more so who's, you know, tax preparation. And if you've used TurboTax, that's fine. I would definitely add that on your resume and then specify, you know, the separate the bookkeeping from the tax preparation that you've done. Okay. And and I would also include how long you've been doing it, even if it's for family and friends, definitely include whether it's, you know, one year, two year or, you know, for a few months. Okay. And so, but it doesn't matter because for uh, my nonprofit, I've been doing their taxes for five years, filing their 990. Definitely inc include that on there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, I think this question would go to Samantha or if others can also um, answer this. Um, is a phone job stressful? Is it like, uh, yeah, I don't know if you have to take 20 calls an hour? Um, yeah, how, how is it? Or even uh, chats, like how many chats would you have to work um, in an hour? And would it eventually get stressful? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't think it's stressful. I have about three, four appointments uh, a week. Each appointment is about 45 minutes. And then uh, chat, you get, it depends on, on the day and the time of the month. So towards the beginning of the month, when, when you're trying to get information from the client, then you may have uh, more chats. But I would, I would say it's, enjoyable it's not stressful it's a great job to have so you don't feel like burned out or something like that no not and you get to um choose whether you want to work 20 hours 40 hours i mean i work 40 hours so i'm already on max capacity now if you worked uh, 20 or 30 hours a week then it would be a lot less Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Cheryl. Megan? Okay, hi everyone. So I was just wanting some clarification on the bookkeeping side. Um, I'm sorry, child in the background, so I'm kind of listening in. Um, on Tuesday, Blair, I think you mentioned that there was a deadline of April 30th to apply to for a higher date in June. Um, I just wanted to, clarify what was needed to apply because I finished the bookkeeping course through Coursera, but I haven't done the test. I just started my certificate um, and I was hoping to get that done before April 30th. And I'm understanding that I just need the ProAdvisor certificate to apply. Yeah, um, great question. So the April 30th cutoff is for our June 3rd hire date. And so you would need to have, we, we just need to be able to get a, a verbal offer out to you and accepted by that date. So you would have had to have completed your um, your hire view interview before then, probably, probably say like ASAP, right? And then um, you would also want to have your QuickBooks Online Provisor certificate either completed or very close to being completed for that time frame. Um, I think we have another week outside of that if we're looking at the june 17th higher date um but yeah those are kind of the main the main things we're looking at right now and the reason behind that is is um, we have to process um, background checks onboarding request we have to have your equipment shipped out to you in, in order to process as well so that's why we have that um lead time of about a month there okay so what would okay it, so like in my situation since i just started the pro advisor course um if i decided to apply what would be your recommendation 
on some of the answers that I should put on that the first questionnaire to um, in order for it to get to a recruiter. Because I know, yeah. like you said, there's still like time frames where depending on how much applicants you get, I might not hear back for like a week. Yeah, I'm, you know, you want to be obviously truthful and transparent on there, of course, but um, if you're if you're very close to completing the, the QBO Pro Advisor certificate um, and you, you, you feel strongly that you'll be able to successfully complete, I think it would help to say that you, you're, you're working through that and almost have it. And then that you, you mentioned you completed the Intuit Bookkeeping Professional Certificate as well, it cut out a little bit, but I think you said you had that too. So definitely note that. Yes. And okay. then um, if you don't hear anything um, within a short, you know, a, a short period of time, just feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll help you out. Okay, perfect. Thank you so right. much. I appreciate you answering my question. You bet. My pleasure. Great question. Thank you, Megan. P.S. I love seeing all of your sweet kids on here. Like my heart is just thumping every time I see a sweet little smile. So thank you for coming mamas. Uh, Sam, would you like to go next? I was wondering, so if I apply just trying to clarify, if I apply for um, the bookkeeping and I finish it and I'm in Texas when I'm doing it, if I move out of state um, and I'm already higher, is is there gonna be like a difference in pay if I move out of state or is it the same um, pay throughout? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question too. Um, so um, we're not in the business of, of lowering compensation so let's say you you were in texas and you moved to a state where the the pay was lower we would work something out with your manager to keep uh pay uh, whole where you were previously at um if you move to a state where the cost of living is significantly higher and as such our pay rates are higher um there would be an opportunity for your pay to be leveled up to the pay rates for that state oh and, and another question um how long would you say it's like the whole process like the course and um applying certification like just everything like in bookkeeping yeah i mean part of that's on onus is on you right how the the one course is 80 hours the um that's for the into a bookkeeping professional certificate the quickbooks online pro advisor takes about eight to 12 hours um and then once you apply um you know it can it can it can take sometimes a week or two or, or more depending on volume coming in to hear from a uh, back from a recruiter and then um the higher view interview, which would be the next step if the phone screen with the recruiter went well, um, that takes about a week or two to get a response back on the final evaluations. And then the next step from there would be the recruiter following up with you to either say, hey, you did great. We want to extend you an offer for upcoming hire date um, or let you know that we're going to be focusing on some other other candidates. So um, I think given the position that you're in right now with the stuff you have to complete, it seems like it would be extremely challenging to hit those June hire dates as of right now. Um, but don't worry, we're going to have other hire, hire dates coming up. Um, and as soon as we get those confirmed, we'll be sure to share those out. So I would say just, you know, if you're if you're interested, charge forward with the, the process and we'll help guide you along the way. Uh, and one more question, last question. Um, if I go for the uh, bilingual side, um, what else would I have to do for that? Yeah, so the higher view interview for the bilingual position will have questions in Spanish and you'll respond to those questions in Spanish. And that's how we gauge your um, level of fluency proficiency with, with Spanish as it relates to this role. Okay, thank you. Sure, good questions. Uh, first, I want to take Lydia Bakar's uh, question here because she she did speak a little bit earlier. She wanted to know, I'm interested in QuickBooks. I'm coming from a clean slate. What is the absolute bare minimum to be considered? Is the pro advisor cert an 80 hour course enough or is one year of experience absolutely necessary? So Lydia, the 80 hour course series and passing the test does remove the need for you to have one year of work experience to qualify, but you do also need the pro advisor cert. So I wanted to knock that one out really quick. Uh, let's see, Christina Thomas. Um, so I took the 80 hour course, but I was wondering, um, is it better to complete the pro advisor course first before taking the Pearson do test or which one should you do first? Hi, I can I can chime in on that one. The so you know there's no 
real recommendation or, or um, benefit there because the QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor um, certificate is, is specifically geared to the QBO software um, and the Intuit Bookkeeping Professional Certificate is geared to like the, the bookkeeping and accounting fundamentals. Um, so, I, you know, it could help to do the certificate first. Um, I don't know, Samantha, maybe you have something to add in on, on that one there or uh, Liz? I think the 80 hour certification would be better so that you have a clear understanding of accounting and then doing the pro advisor. So it comes a little easier for you. Does that answer your question, Christina? Uh, yes, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Michelle, could you please drop the how to get one year of tax experience episode in the chat for Jill? Joy, you have a question? Yes, I'm sorry for the delay. Um, so I turn on my video because <laughs> I am not as confident as y'all are right now. Uh, it's, it's evening, but um, so I'm currently in Germany and we're trying to transition back to the United States. So how does it work if you are overseas? Can you work still or how do you want to? I mean, I don't have the certification yet. I would be glad to do that. And I'm actually glad to do that. How does that work for military spouses who are in Europe or not in Hawaii or Alaska? Thanks. Yeah, so for the QuickBooks Live and the um, TurboTax Live roles, you do have to be located within one of the 50 US states to work. Go ahead, Joy. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so we okay. say that for you to enroll, you have to still be in the United States or can you start the Coursera? Because it's 80 hours. And then once you get that, because I know that you can take person view in, in um, some Germany, I mean, there are several places overseas where there's a person view center where you can get licensed. So is that even possible? And once you get the certification, that's when you can start the application or can you start the application before you transition in? How does that work? We typically recommend as long as you're within 90 days of coming to the U.S., you can start your application process. I don't know if that um, is problematic for Intuit and I'm sure you can do the training whether you're CONUS or OCONUS, but you do have to be in the United States to qualify and get hired. Karina or Blair, would you guys like to add anything to uh, that? The, the training has to, it can't be done um, outside of the US, unfortunately. So for us, we, we you know, move at such a rapid, um, speed that um, also to the problem would be we don't do phone screens our recruiters um, don't make calls outside of the U.S. so um, it would have to be our preference would be that you're already residing in the U.S. Um, on the TurboTax side. That's really good information I didn't know that so our team can take note of that too. Thanks for clarifying and wait, you. wouldn't you add there to Karina the, the reason why is due to security and the regulations yep. around the finance industry? Correct. Uh, per IRS or BFF. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle. Hi. A few more questions. Um, I think it was answered, Blair answered it, but for long-term career continuity, you mentioned it's only in the 50 states. Um, is there any chance that you would be including U.S. territories anytime soon or in a few years? Is that a possibility or is it pretty strict on the 50 states? Also, um, if hired training, is it a set schedule? How does that work out? Um, is it as a part-time or is it a full-time schedule? So I just wanted to know about that as well. Thanks. Sure, yeah. So um, no plans to go outside the US as of right now and, it, and um, uh, even if it's a US territory, so you would still have to be located in one of the 50 US states to uh, to be employed in any of these roles. Um, the training for QuickBooks Live, uh, it's about uh, two weeks and there is a set schedule for the live sessions. Uh, the live sessions are Monday through Friday um, and there's two time frames there. There's a, a 9 a.m. Uh, PT and a 2 p.m. PT for the two-hour live session. Um, and then there's also self-led, self-paced work that you'll do throughout those two weeks as well. So it's it's approximately around 20 hours per week. So two hours of live session, two hours of uh, self-led, self-paced stuff that you'll complete on a daily basis there. And you can choose which live session you want to attend as well. Does that answer your question, Michelle? Yes, it does. Thank you. No problem. All right, Ms. Ciel Vargas? Um, yes, I have a question. Um, I do have the experience uh, for Intuit TurboTax as a live support 
agent, but I don't have like a, a, a year of tax experience. So is there any courses that I can do or uh, because I already know how to navigate the system, like uh, to being on calls with clients, uh, look at their screen and stuff. So that should be okay or I need to take another course for that. Well, I'll tell you, Mitzia, we definitely, definitely encourage you to, when we talked about Intet Academy that offers that course. So I would definitely take advantage of that. And besides the tax associate and tax expert, we um, do hire for another role. It's called a tax prep assistant. And that one, it does not require tax experience, but it's all customer service skills. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, and our last question, Tasha Perkins. Yes, um, I was curious, as far as the equipment goes, um, what exactly is that? And then do you guys require, I know we have to be hardwired. Um, do you require a VPN or anything along that line? Yeah, so um, the equipment would be an Intuit laptop, a headset, secured webcam, USB port hubs, ethernet cable, um, and um, you do have to be hardwired, meaning plugging your laptop into your modem, right? So you have the, you know, the chance to mitigate any type of buffering or calls dropping, ensuring the highest upload download speeds. Um, and then there was one more piece to your question there on the end. I'm sorry. Would you repeat that? A uh, VPN. Oh yes. Yep. So we do set you up um, with VPN, multi-factor authentication. It's usually just via an application you download on your smartphone, um, and that's one of the ways we ensure uh, integrity around security uh, for the system. Thank you. Welcome. Blair, all of that is provided by Intuit. That is correct. Yep. No charge to you. You don't have to pay for it. It's all provided to you uh, for Intuit. So we really look to set you up for success upon joining. Awesome. Thank you everyone for your time and attention today. Again, if you didn't get your question answered, we're here for you. Our team is here for you. You can email hire at vertforce.us. We will direct you to the right point of contact at Intuit to get your question answered if it's not something on our frequently asked questions list that we can provide instruction immediately. Um, have a wonderful Thursday, have a wonderful weekend. And always you can find the Intuit positions on the Vertforce job board, the ones that are currently open. That's gonna be at https colon slash slash jobs dot vertforce dot us. And you're welcome to join a Vertforce job pod if you would like real-time alerts on opportunities such, uh, such as the ones we've been discussing today pop up. We will be providing a follow-up email. I feel like a flight attendant right now, honestly. We will be providing a follow-up email. <laughs> please, please check your inboxes for your follow-up email where you can get all of your links and everything that you need. And um, I love you all. Thank you so much for coming. It was so nice to see all of your faces. Thank you for being outstanding Vertforce members and for sharing the Vertforce message. And good luck. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>